Hello. Continuing from yesterday, here's the same polyrhythm, the other way around, and I'm going to uh, show you a bit about how you can practice this sort of polyrhythm. So first, a uh, reminder of how it goes. So you've got, uh, I'm playing, it's a simple 5-4 polyrhythm, nothing very complicated, uh, just steady beat in both hands, but I'm playing them around, uh, going around a different number of sounds from the number of beats in the polyrhythm. So on the left hand side, I'm going to play four, going around three sounds. So counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. On the right hand side, I'm going to count five, going around four sounds. That's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, And so I'm just going to play a 5 4 polyrhythm with the nose two together, but going around the sides like that. So you end up with something like this. Um, wait a minute. That sort of thing. Now, um, the, so I'll just talk a little bit about how I practice it. So, and then I'll play it a little bit longer after I've done that. So, the way I, um, you get started on this, it's really, it's not nearly to, so difficult to play conceptually, it's not technically difficult really at all. It's more like a mind, like a tongue twister thing. It's a bit also like, like doing like that, but different speeds with each hand sort of a thing. It's one of these tongue twister, um, independent sort of thought kind of things. So, uh, uh, Doing each hand individually is quite, it's sort of like one of these things that conductors, you know, like conductors do for exercises and things. So it's um, the, uh, to, to, you come into it quite some, one way of coming into it is to uh, do just one of them at a time. So you go, uh, you go like this, I start with your polyrhythm, them, right, which way around am I doing? Five on this side. something like that, whatever it is, and, uh, but now you go, now instead of just doing uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, you just start moving around your sequence of beats on that hand, and, uh, uh, but it's easy to remember because you just know, you don't need to have much memory or anything, you just remember where you were last and go to the next one. So you just play your polygons before, but start going around these beats. So, like that. And that really is quite easy to do. Uh, I think, you know, if you can do the polyrhythm, then you probably would find that much not hard to do at all. So then you try it the other way around as well, of course. So. So, you, so that much again is quite easy to do, but then the, uh, finally you start doing both at once, and that's where it starts getting, um, that's where it gets mind boggling and a bit like a tongue twister. And uh, it's a bit like when you first uh, uh, start doing polyrhythm, suddenly you get it. It takes quite a bit, it may take you a while, uh, some people might just get it instantly, I don't know, it took me a while. So, and then you, and then you end up with something like this. Wait a minute, I keep doing it the wrong way around. check that you are actually playing the right thing is to notice when the two sides come together. So it's going to come together like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then like that. 
In fact, it's, it's kind of under, uh, underlying color meter behind it all. Like that, behind it all. Those are where the two measures come together. So if you notice, so, it, so it's, I stop there, and then the next uh, time around, they come together like that. So I'll just go that far, and so you can see what I'm saying. So, like that, okay? And the next time around, it's going to come together like and that, and so on. And the next time around, it's going to come together like that. So that, that also is um, quite simple, really, but you, uh, it just helps you keep track of where you are in it. And now, another thing I think is really helpful with this, and with playing all sorts of polyrhythms, is you often see people playing polyrhythms like this. Where they sort of, they just play the beat and then they just sort of, they're waiting for the next one to come. Now, obviously if you're doing uh, what some people do, is playing two polyrhythms at one with a single hand. Now obviously if you do that, you'd have to do it something like that. But if you're playing uh, a, just a single polyrhythm with each hand, I think it helps you to do something like do a very continuous motion like that. I think that helps with independence of the two hands, because you really feel, if you do it like that, in each hand, you really feel, and it's kind of like, when you hit the beat, immediately come up, like that, a nice fluid motion, don't linger anywhere. Now if you do that, uh, it's just a suggestion that if you do that, then you may find more feeling of flow and of independence of the two hands. So if I do this nice and slowly, with this flowing motion, something like this. Sorry. So, uh, so that's the that's the tip there. I think that helps. I think that's it. I'll just play the rhythm just a little bit more to kind of play this out. Uh, so those are my little tips for for practicing it. on that side. You just get a rather nice feeling of both hands are playing their own independent rhythm. This one's going like that. One of the hands. 
and so I hope you enjoyed that. 